Ham Radio Concepts. The Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu India, Yankee Zulu India, Roger. Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu India. Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu India. Uh, very good, Alex. You're five and I guess seven on this old analog meter here in Florida. Name is Eric over. Because Eric got us in Florida. Thank you. Good signal here, and we'll be looking for you in contest. And I'll catch you on the zero tangle later. Yeah, yeah Roger. Good luck, seven three. Alpha Bravo four Alpha Zulu. The name is Richard. Five watts QRP from Florida. Okay, as he said, I told you what I held down. I held down Alpha 504, Alpha Zulu, QRP, as he said, in 49. You got it, Richard. I'm going to use a 26 inch bicycle rim as a 10 meter loop. And I got to tell you, that's impressive. Two stations in South America, one in Chile, and one in, uh, I think, Brazil, and actually a station in Florida. Uh, on 10 meters with that bicycle rim antenna. I'm about uh, five feet from the water, and like I said, I'm using about 75 watts right now. We got an MFJ loop tuner uh, and uh, a 26 inch bicycle rim held together where it's broken by an alligator clip. Go ahead. You know what I like about this is when you measure it for 13 feet, as the loop tuner says, you just pull out 13 feet. <laughs> and away you go. We There's 13 need... feet right there. That's right. Let's see how this one's going to work. Let's right. make some contacts. Roger, Roger. You're 5'9 here in West Virginia. All right. Thanks, West Virginia. Uh, and I'll let you know I'm working portable on a tape measure antenna, 13 foot in diameter with a 25 foot tape measure. Go ahead. I love it, I love it. Uh, very good. Uh, all right. Uh, I like people to get out there and, and experiment. Satellite today is going to be 32 degrees elevation in the rain from 322 degrees acquisition of signal to, I think, 244 loss of signal. KJ4YZI, Echo Lima 97. I got Echo Mike 5, thanks, thank, uh, five six, thanks, 7 3. KJ 4, YZI, Echo Lima 9 7. KJ 4, YZI, November 8, Hotel Mike, Fox Mike 1 8. Fox Mike 1 8, got it. Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu India, Echo Lima 9 7. Is HF Mobile actually usable? For Yankee Zulu India Mobile in Florida, over. Okay, Kilo Zulu for Yankee Zulu India uh, Mobile. Uh, mobile in Florida, okay, Eric. Thank you, you're five and five, five by six from your mobile. Name is Lauro, over. This is my friend QRZ, Kilo Bravo 8, Yankee Bravo Golf. Yeah, I think there's nobody else on the band tonight or this afternoon but Florida. It seems like everybody from down south is coming on. Yeah, you're 59. I'm just west of Cleveland, right up here on uh, Lake Erie, about 20 miles west. Uh, you're a solid 59. All right, have a good one, buddy. Your mobile is definitely working. KJ4YZI, KB8YBG. We're going to spin back to the west. Talk to you later, Eric. Okay, 73, Whiskey Victor 2 Victor. Anybody else out there that can still hear me? Whiskey Victor 2 Victor? Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu India. Okay, Kilo Juliet 4 again. Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu India, KJ4 YZI, Echo Lima 97 in Florida. Over. Okay, uh, Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu India. Echo Mike uh, 5 4, I think it was. Over. Echo Lima 97. I switched from the beam to the vertical. Figure I'd check back on six meters again, and it's still coming in strong here in the Florida. Over. Okay, uh, is the name Eric? Over. Uh, Sir Roger. Okay, the name is Dan Delta Alpha November. I'm in Fox November 21. Fox November 21. Over. All right, so you want to be a ham radio operator. You want to get a license for amateur radio and participate in things like that that you just saw. Maybe it interests you. In fact, 
people that have saw videos like that in like you know YouTube channel in the comments, you can see in there. Go through and look. Wow, this is interesting. How do I get started? Or what's the best way to get licensed or study for this material? When I got started, and a lot of people got started, it was all books, you know. And I tried getting the wife licensed or interested with a book. Here, honey, here's a book. Throw it down. You know, study, learn the answers, highlight them, and then keep doing it until you think you're good, and then we'll go take the test. And I think the 2020 way of doing that is with hamradioprep.com. Now, I'm going to show you about hamradioprep.com, and I think it because if it interests her, when she started playing with this, she was like, wow, this is a lot easier. Like you get a little video clip, you know, a little uh, interpretation on video, and then you highlight some words, kind of method of doing it created by hams, real hams, okay, with a guaranteed success rate, or they will pay the exam that you failed, okay? And if you use the code ERIC20, all one word, ERIC20, you will save 20% on any course that you buy. They have technician, general, extra. They even have courses for beginners to the Baofeng radio, which is what every new ham has. It's a Baofeng. They want to make it exciting and easy to get into ham radio. Now, no, there's no test or study guides in the world that will make you a ham radio operator. To become a ham radio operator, you get a license. To learn and know how to use amateur radio, begins with pushing that button and talking to people and listening on how they do it. You can listen all day without a ham radio license, but you can't talk until you get it. So let's check out, I'm gonna go through the tech portion of the hamradioprep.com and I'm going to just start, we're gonna do about three minutes of it, four minutes of it. And we're gonna see for your sake in the video, if this interests you or this, you think this makes it easier to get your ham radio license, That'll be enough said right there. And again, Eric 20, all one word, you get 20%. That is the price of a paperback book on Amazon or eBay or even new at the Hamfest. Now you can get a used book and you can do it that way. That's great. Books are not dead. You can do it with studying with a book. But nowadays, ham radio is so crazy busy right now. It's getting so popular. And now with the COVID, they're doing license exams at home on my computer like this. The best part about hamradioprep.com is I could use this laptop, I could use my phone, I could use a tablet, I could do it on the bus ride, well if I did ride a bus to work every day, or if you're out in the city and you, you know, maybe you're sitting at, uh, I don't know, a guard shack and nobody's coming through the gate and you got nothing better to do. You can learn and study on hamradioprep.com. So we're gonna check this out. Code Eric20 is thank you for Ham Radio Prep for helping everybody out because I want more hams and they want more hams too. So let's check it out. I'll give you three minutes and we'll see what you think about it. Hamradioprep.com. I haven't logged in yet. Before I do, I'll just give you a tour of the site real quick. Now, they do have ham radio guides on here regarding can you take the ham radio license test online? And it gives you a lot of information about how that works. You're not just going to, if you didn't know, with the coronavirus, this is the first time that this has ever had remote testing for ham radio online. So I encourage you to take advantage of that. But they did have studies out there that said a lot of people still aren't doing it online. But there's so many people that have wrote comments and told me, Eric, I have no place to go take my test. I live in the middle of some podunk place in in, in Montana where the closest store is 300 miles away. I mean, they, you can do it here if you got internet. Now, do you have internet 300 miles away from a store? Probably not. But uh, you can do this because of the coronavirus. And the way they operate this is you have to have cameras, you know, show in your room that you're not around anybody. You're not cheating. I mean, there's a there's a big thing to do with that. So not every, you know, Joe Blow is going out there and taking a license just because he Christmas treat or did an open book multiple choice. You got to do this online as if you ha and you have multiple volunteer examiners watching to make sure your eyes aren't moving or not flipping through a book and stuff. But you can read more about that here. The best handheld ham radios, they show, you know, when you get a license, what are you going to do? Which radio do I get? I mean, I you can watch my videos and I can give you recommendations, but they do have a guide of handpicked the best handheld ham radios recommended used by hundreds of hams, probably us on YouTube and vendors and stuff like that. And, uh, you know, three courses here, technician, general, and extra. I'm going to be taking the extra, but today we'll show you the general or the uh, technician quick like. Get an idea. 25,000 students trust. Now, I want to be one of these reviews here of getting my extra on here. Because if I'm going to say this is a really good way that I think to get a license, well, then I want to be one of these things on here on the front page that say, 
this is why I chose ham radio prep. This is how it helped me and show my license there. And I got something cool to show you. You see all these got paper licenses? I got something real cool uh, that I'll show you here soon that you can get from hamradioprep.com, more than just a paper license. So how they teach focuses on the correct answers. Basically, you know, they'll give you a paragraph and they'll sum it up with highlighted answers or words in blue so that you get the idea of those stick in your head. You know, and, and that's how they taught me in school back in the day where they, you know, they, they said repeated words, focus on the repeated words, focus on the words that start with P, blah, blah, blah. And that gets it in your head. So they're not just saying question one, this is the answer. Question one, this is the answer. They're trying to give you an idea of how this, you know, uh, uh, helps your brain adapt to, to pass the exam. Learn through video. So multiple studies have shown that video can be a highly effective teaching tool. So you can get a bunch of these videos in each lesson, and I'll show you that. Uh, practice the real thing. So they have, uh, the test software creates exams exactly like the FCC test, okay? Learning games or flashcards and matching games engage your mind in active recall. And study at home or on the go. As I said, you can use it on your computer, your tablet, your iPhone, whatever. So let's do this. And they did it. They do give you a, a free lesson to try it out. But here's the guarantee. We believe in our courses so much that if you don't pass the FCC exam on your first try, we'll give your money back and pay the exam fee. We call it the Ham Radio Prep Guarantee. So if you don't pass, oh, shucks, man. If it, nope, worth, you know what? If you just have to do two things. And receive at least 84% on one of your practice exams and read through all of the courses and chapters. If you do that and you're getting at least 84 or higher on the practice exams, you will pass on the first try. So they're not handing out money for all these people that are failing. Okay, it's, it's a very good thing. So here's what I said. Code ERIC20, 20% off of $25 is uh i don't know five five dollars off so 20 bucks you can't get a decent manual for 20 bucks to learn or study your technician license uh if you do the technician and general because when you take your exam you can take all three at the same time if you pass for all three you know if you pass the tech you can opt for the general right there pay the fee for it pass it opt for the extra pay the fee i know two people in vero beach that have done it. They walked in, never had ham radio before they studied. They didn't use ham radio prep. I don't think it was around back then. They walked in and they, they passed all three and they're an extra. The only bad thing is they don't really get on the radio too much other than some local stuff. So that, that kind of stinks. But you can see here it's pretty affordable. Okay. And this is what you get. Let's go up here to, uh, oh, and the membership never expires here. So let's go up here. Let's go to learn more on the tech license course. Okay. So you get an introduction to amateur radio, and that'll give you an idea of what it's for. Why are we doing this? Why am I here making a ham radio channel? Why am I showing you ham radio prep? Why am I excited to be the one when people meet me in person and say, Eric, you turned me into a ham radio operator. I never had any idea, and then you, and now I'm teaching other kids in ham radio in, in Boy Scouts and stuff. That makes me feel good. So it'll give you an idea here of what it's about. But then there's some other things here. Ham radio operation rules and techniques, electronics, wave propagation, operating modes. And if you look at the course lessons here, it tells you all the lessons in the tech. You know, operating procedures, radio waves, how it works, uh, you know, the, the uh, atmospheric bands, uh, atmospheric uh, layers for different bands, how radio waves work, antennas, stuff like that. So we're going to do this. We're going to go and log in real quick. Okay, welcome back, Eric. And we're going to start here on the technician license course. So I've already started 4% on this, and uh, the wife's got her own separate account, and she's farther than that. But I don't need a technician, so I didn't go too far into it. So right here, before you get started, it tells you, read this. This is how you're going to do it. Watch the video. Look for the blue words. Take a quick test. Move on. All right, so I'll give you an idea. Here's, here's one of the videos here. Welcome to Ham Radio Prep. Throughout this program, we will teach you everything you need to know to pass the technician license exam and join the 1% of Americans who have earned an amateur radio call sign. Okay. And then when you go through that, you'll get here. Uh, let's see. Intro to amateur radio. Focus on the blue words. Okay. So it'll give you the service purpose. For instance, before we discuss the technical aspects of ham radio, let's talk about why amateur radio exists. 
The FCC says the amateur radio service's purpose is advancing skills in the technical communication phases of the radio art. Now, that is one of the answers. Now, you see how they put that in blue? But they gave you an, a, a reason in a couple sentences why. It says test help. The key word here is art. So when you see that answer that says art, it'll automatically make you jump out in your head and say, I remember that in blue, the radio art. And then uh, you go down here talking on ham, ham, you know, ham radio. So after you pass your first exam, the FCC will assign you a call sign, which is a mix of letters and numbers like W9ZDP or for me, Kilo Juliet 4, Yankee Zulu India, KJ4YZI. And you'll use that to identify yourself on the air, much like TV and broadcast radio stations. You ever, did you ever know that? For the very, very green people, radio stations and TV stations are broadcasting a signal, and they have call signs as well. 99.7 Jack FM, you know what, WJKD, uh, the Gator, WGTR. Or K, you know, that's how that works. So for ham radio, you have a license like this, a call sign with a, you know, a letter or two letters, and then a number, and then one, two, or three letters after. Now, an amateur station is required to transmit its call sign at least every ten minutes during, and at the end of communication. Okay, and it gives you a little picture here. Say your call sign at least every ten minutes during and at the end of a communication. What does a call sign look like? You've probably already seen them. And yes, people have license plates like this. And sometimes, I, I do it all the time, I can notice a license plate number that seems or appears like a call sign, but I can tell it's not. Because you'll never start, in the U.S. at least, you'll never start with a number. And you'll never have like 967BYG. You know, it doesn't work that way with the ham radio call signs. So, K1XXX is a valid call sign. And... Um, you know, you can have vanity call signs, so you can change it to, you know, your initials and stuff like that. Any licensed amateur can get a vanity call sign, so feel free to request and personalize a call sign once your license is issued by the FCC. And they say it again here. They put it out here. When using tactical identifiers, such as race headquarters during a public service event, you must transmit your FCC call sign at the end of each communication and every 10 minutes during a communication. So... That, that means, okay, so we're, we're going here. And as you read, because I don't want to bore you now, I'm just reading it to you. Now watch this, okay? You know, this should be common sense. But indecent or obscene language is prohibited on the air. So you see all this blue stuff, all right? Now, we're going to skip through this, and I'm going to show you why. Go to the quiz. Now, after you get the quiz, we'll retake it here. Now, what is a grace period following the expiration of an amateur license within that can be renewed? Would be two years. Okay, correct. Now, if I do a wrong answer, which I'm going to do now, when is the amateur station required to transmit? Now, it's every, it's at uh, uh, at least every ten minutes during and at the end. But I'm going to fail on purpose. I'm going to do uh, right here, at least every fifteen minutes. Now, watch it fail. See. Then it gives you an answer. Now, you may say, well, big deal. It gives you an answer. Okay. Uh, which HF bands does a technician class operator have phone privileges? It would be 10 meter band only. That's uh, 28.3 to 28.5. All right. Now, as you do that, you'll go through it and it'll give you an idea if you passed or failed. Now, you move to lesson two. And here's a little video for lesson two. In order to use most concepts for station operation, when making their first call, most ham radio operators start out by calling CQ or calling any station. However, any time before you call CQ, you should listen first to be sure that no one else is using the frequency, ask if the frequency is in use, and make sure you are in your assigned band. Okay, so they give you that, and then you're gonna go, like I said, operating procedures. Now you're gonna go through and text. So when you get down here later on, you're gonna find that there's some other stuff that um, the, the way they do it with quizzing and, and stuff like that. Now, if you go to claim your student appreciation gift, they give you a little gift. If you pass or you come through and you finish this, you get a free little gift uh, appreciation from them that will uh, give you an idea. It says, in order to claim your free gift after passing your exam, please fill out this form and hold up your completing uh, completion of examination and you'll get a little prize. Now, resources has some other stuff. How to get your ham radio license. Why you should consider a Baofeng handheld for ham radio. Winlink, sending emails over radio. 
uh, FPV drones using a ham radio license. If you're a drone operator, check into this because this is going to be right up your alley. Getting a ham radio license, whether you want to talk on radio or not, but you can you can interact with FPV drones legally by having a ham radio license. Now, here on this site, there's also find an exam near you. Now, this is something someone just asked today on my recent V1 video. And they said, where do I find it? Because maybe they don't know they can take it online or they don't want to take it online. Right here by search, you can look by your zip code and you can find a ARRL, ARRL approved testing center based on a uh, zip code. So they, they give you the resources to, to send it over here so that you can find where your division is and where you can take your ham radio license. Here's one more thing I want you to do. I want you to subscribe to this channel because you can see in my playlist of getting started in amateur radio, I have videos that Ham Radio Prep does not. And that includes, you know, purchasing your first radio, where to go to get your first radio, uh, what kind of radio do you think you want, how to talk, what are you going to expect, and then all the different amateur radio bands you've learned on Ham Radio Prep and taking the exam and stuff what bands you're privileged to talk on, and what the frequency ranges are. But it doesn't tell you what you're gonna hear on there, what kind of people, and from experience that I have on videos, that's what you can probably gain from my videos now that you get licensed, is what will I get on 40 meters? What happens during the day on 20 meters? What happens during the night on 80 meters? Check out my videos, subscribe to this channel, turn on that notification bell, because everybody says they don't get notifications. They're like, I don't understand, Eric. I didn't know you had that video out there. Subscribe and follow along. I hope this video got some interest to you for getting your license, getting started, because I want more hams out there. That's the whole purpose of me doing videos like this, is you may see me talking on the radio and you're like, big deal, is he gonna show off? No, it's to drive interest for you to get licensed. When you see me doing it, it makes it a little more comfortable, I think to know what you would expect on ham radio. At the same time, there's other YouTubers out there, Josh at Ham Radio Crash Course and all the other ones who have videos on other topics that I haven't covered. And you can learn a lot on YouTube, but first subscribe here, stay tuned, leave a comment, let me know what you thought and I hope to talk to you. Reach out and tell me on the air, hey Eric, I watched your video, you got me started, met you at HamFest, I watched your video, hamradioprep.com, got me licensed. Tell me, I wanna know. And thanks to hamradioprep.com for being a good sponsor to this channel because that way I don't have to ask you guys for support because they're supporting me to do stuff like this. 7-3 everybody, I hope you get licensed and I hope to talk to you one day on the air. KJ4 YZI.